Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using direct stiffness matrix method. This is the second problem we are going to analyze using this method. For better understanding, first see the first problem. In this problem, we will move little faster. Before analyzing this beam, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there are two spans span AB and span BC. In the span AB, we have a point load acting in the center. In the span BC, we have uniformly distributed load acting for the full span. In the points A and B, we have hinged supports. In the point C, we have a fixed support. Length of the span AB is 3 meter and the length of the span BC is 4 meter. Now let us find the fixed end moments and reactions. First, let us find them in the span AB. In the span AB, we have a central point load 48 kN. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WL upon 8 and positive WL upon 8. Here W is 48 and L is 3. After the calculation, we are getting M of AB and M of BA. Now let us find the vertical reactions RA and RB1. In the span AB we have symmetrical loading. To find RA and RB1 we have to divide the point load 48 by 2. When we do that for RA and RB1 we are getting 24 kN. Now let us find the fixed end moments and reactions in the span BC. In the span BC, we have uniformly distributed load acting for the full span. The formulas for finding the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. Here W is 15 and L is 4. After the calculation, we are getting M of BC and M of CB. Now let us find vertical reactions RB2 and RC. In the span BC, we have symmetrical loading. To find RB2 and RC, we have to multiply the UDL 15 with the distance 4 and then divide by 2. When we do that, we are getting RB2 and RC as 30 kN. In the stiffness matrix method, we have to check the number of supports in which the slope can occur. Let us see the conditions. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. In the hinged support, there will be slope. And in the roller support also, there will be slope. In this beam, in the points A and B, we have hinged supports. So there will be slope in the points A and B. In this case, the kinematic indeterminacy is 2. In the point A, we have the slope theta A and in the point B, we have the slope theta B. Now, let us make the coordinates diagram. In this analysis, there are two coordinates. They are in the points A and B because in these points only, we have the unknown displacement that is the slope. The coordinates represents the moments and the moments should be placed in the clockwise direction. We know the formula to find the displacements. Delta matrix is equal to K matrix inverse into P matrix minus PL matrix. In this analysis, there are two coordinates. So inside the delta matrix, P matrix and PL matrix, we will have two values. The size of the stiffness matrix will be 2 cross 2. That means inside the matrix, we will have two rows and two columns. In this formula, first let us find the PL matrix. 
Inside the PL matrix, we will have the forces or movements developed in the coordinates due to the given load. Let us find PL1. Our first coordinate is in the point A. In the point A, we have found a fixed end moment M of AB. Let us apply that. Let us find PL2. Our second coordinate is in the point B. In the point B, we have found two fixed end moments M of BA and M of BC. We have to add both of them. After adding, we are getting minus 2. In this formula, now let us find the P matrix. Inside the P matrix, we will have the final forces or movements acting in the coordinate direction. First, let us find P1. Our first coordinate is in the point A. To find P1, we have to check if there are any movements in the point A. In the point A, there is no movement, so we can enter 0. Let us find P2. Our second coordinate is in the point B. In the point B also, there is no movement, so let us apply 0. In this formula, now we are going to find the stiffness matrix. For finding the stiffness matrix, first we have to make the stiffness matrix for the spans. This is the stiffness matrix for the span. First, let us make the stiffness matrix for the span AB. Length of the span AB is 3. So, instead of L, let us apply 3 in all of the elements. Now, from this matrix, we have to take the stiffness matrix elements outside. Our first coordinate is in the point A. In the point A, we have the movement MAB. MAB represents the second row and the second column. Since it is in the first coordinate, let us name the second row and the second column as 1. Our second coordinate is in the point B. In the point B, we have the movement MBA. MBA represents the last row and the last column. So, let us name the last row and the last column as 2. Now, let us strike out unwanted rows and columns. We do not want RA. So, let us cut the first column and the first row. We do not want RB1. So, let us strike out the third row and the third column. Now, let us take out the stiffness matrix elements. This is K11. But when we take it outside, we have to remember that outside there is EI. So, K11 is equal to 4EI upon 3. This is K12. K12 is 2EI upon 3. This is K21. So, K21 is 2EI upon 3. This is K22. So, K22 is 4EI upon 3. Now, let us make the stiffness matrix for the span BC. Length of the span BC is 4. So, instead of L, let us apply 4 in all of the elements. In the point B, we have the second coordinate. In the second coordinate, we have the movement MBC. MBC represents the second row and the second column. So, let us indicate the second row and the second column as true. Now, let us strike out unwanted elements. We do not want RB2. So, let us strike out the first column and the first row. We do not want RC. So, let us strike the third row and the third column. We do not want MCB. So, let us strike the fourth row and the fourth column. We have only one value remaining. That is K22. 1 into EI, we will get EI. Now, let us form the stiffness matrix. For K22, we have two values. 
we have to add both of them 4 upon 3 plus 1 we will get 7 upon 3 let us apply k11 k12 and k21 for our own convenience let us keep ei outside in this formula we have found everything let us apply them ei inverse is 1 upon ei we can add these two matrices after adding we are getting this matrix for this matrix we have to find the inverse we can apply all of the values in the calculator and get the inverse if you do not know how to find the inverse in the calculator see the description below there is a link you can click the link and watch the video i have used the calculator and got the inverse after multiplying these two matrices we are getting the values of theta a and theta b now let us find the final moments and reactions first let us find them in the span a b for the span a b we have made the stiffness matrix let us apply that now let us see how to form the displacement matrix our first coordinate is in the point A. In the point A, we have the displacement theta A. MAB is located in the point A. For MAB, we have to apply the value of theta A. Our second coordinate is in the point B. In the point B, we have theta B. MBA is located in the point B. For MBA, we have to apply the value of theta b for the remaining terms we can apply zero when we apply the values of theta a and theta b let us keep one upon ea outside for our own convenience in the p fixed matrix we have to apply the fixed end reactions and moments which we have calculated initially we can eliminate ei then we can multiply these two matrices when we do that we will get this matrix then we can add these two matrices after adding we are getting the reactions and the moments now let us find the final reactions and the moments in the span bc for the span bc we have made the stiffness matrix let us enter that let us see how to make the displacement matrix in the second coordinate we have theta b in the second coordinate we have to find mbc so for mbc we have to apply theta b for the remaining terms we can enter zero in this matrix we have to apply the fixed end reactions and the movements which we have calculated initially EI and EI will be eliminated. When we multiply these two matrices, we will get this matrix. When we add these two matrices, we will get the reactions and the moments in the span BC. In this analysis, we have calculated all of the moments and the reactions. To get RB, we have to add RB1 and RB2 so that we are getting RB as 63.14 kN. Here I have made the shear force diagram. We can draw the bending moment diagram by superposition method. I have already analyzed this beam using stiffness matrix method, slope deflection method, moment distribution method, flexibility matrix method, and three moment equation method. All of the links are given below. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.